Samiramis article talk language download PDF watch edit for other uses. See Samiramis, disambiguation. Samiramis, Smurms, S, S, 1. Syriac, Samaram, Greek, Samiramis, Arabic. Samiramis, Armenian, 5. Wife of Annas and Ninus, who succeeded the latter to the throne of Assyria, 6. As in the fables of Movses Coronat C. 7. Legends narrated by Diodorus Siculus. Who drew primarily from the works of Tejas of Nidus, 8. 9. Describe her and her relationships to Annas and King Ninus. A mythical king of Assyria not attested in the far older and more comprehensive Assyrian king list. 10. Samiramis, a legendary figure based on the life of Shamaramat, depicted as an armed Amazon in an 18th century Italian illustration Armenians and the Assyrians of Iraq, northeast Syria. Southeast Turkey and northwest Iran still use Shamiram as a given name for girls. 11. The real and historical Shamaramat, the original Akkadian form of the name, was the Assyrian wife of Shamshi Adad V, ruled 824 BC to 811 BC. She was the ruler of the Neo-Assyrian Empire as its regent for five years before her son Adad Nirari III came of age and took the reins of power. 12. She ruled at a time of political uncertainty. Which is one of the possible explanations for why Assyrians may have accepted the rule of a woman when it was not allowed by the cultural tradition. She conquered much of the Middle East and the Levant and stabilized and strengthened the empire after a destructive civil war. It has been speculated that being a woman who ruled successfully may have made the Assyrians regard her with particular reverence and that her achievements may have been retold over the generations. Until she was turned into that legendary figure, 13. The name of Samiramis came to be applied to various monuments in Western Asia and Anatolia whose origins had been forgotten or unknown. 14. Various places in Upper Mesopotamia and throughout Mesopotamia as a whole, Media, Persia, the Levant, Anatolia, the Arabian Peninsula, and the Caucasus bore the name of Samiramis, or is slightly changed. It appears during the Middle Ages and Shamiramagard, meaning created by Samiramis in Armenian, is the old name of the Armenian city of Van. Ultimately, Nearly every stupendous work of antiquity near the Euphrates or in Iran seems to have been ascribed to her. Even the Behistun inscription of Darius, 15, 16, Herodotus ascribes to her the artificial banks that confined the Euphrates, 17, and he knew her name because it was inscribed on a gate of Babylon, 18, While the achievements of Samiramis are clearly in the realm of mythical Persian, Armenian, and Greek historiography, the historical Shamaramat certainly existed. After her husband's death, she might have served as regent for her son, Adad Nirari III. 12. Thus, during that time Shamaramat could have been in control of the vast Neo-Assyrian Empire, 911 to 605 BC which stretched from the Caucasus Mountains in the north to the Arabian Peninsula in the south, and from western Iran in the east to Cyprus in the west. In the city of Asser on the Tigris,
She had an obelisk built and inscribed that read, Steel of Shamaramat, Queen of Shamshi Adad, King of the Universe, King of Assyria, Mother of Adad Narari, King of the Universe, King of Assyria, Daughter-in-law of Shalmaneser, King of the Four Regions of the World, 13. According to Diodorus, a 1st century BC Greek historian, Semiramis was of noble parents, the daughter of the fish goddess Derketo of Ascalon in Assyria and of a mortal. He related that Derketo abandoned her at birth and drowned herself and that doves fed the child until Simis, the royal shepherd, found her. Semiramis married Annas or Menwans, a general under King Ninus, and she became an advisor to King. Her advice led him to great successes in, at the siege of Bactra, she personally led a party of soldiers to seize a key defensive point, leading to the capture of the city. Minas was so struck that he fell in love with her and tried to compel Annas to give her to him as a wife, first offering his own daughter Sanane in return and eventually threatening to put out his eyes as punishment. Out of fear of the king and out of doomed passion for his wife, Annas fell into a kind of frenzy and madness and hanged himself. Minas then married Semiramis, 13, 19. So, here you have what appears to be, um, a mermaid? Of a sort. Her mother was a fish goddess and she ends up on land. That reminds me of that story of um, one of the kings of um, Poland, right? That uh, the, they tell you that the uh, story of the Little Mermaid is um, taken from, right? That uh, this king found her swimming in a pond or something like that, or a lake, and um, took her for a um, or when it, she was. That's where he found her, but I think it was, he'd never seen her like that before, right? Or, I forget how the story goes. He, didn't, he never knew that she had, that she was a fish, but she was from that a lake nearby where he met her. I think that's how the story went. And um, they have the uh, depictions of her being like, the lower half being like a fish, but has like duck legs. And it, it reminds me of um, the things that Dogon, the uh, Namu, right, that the Dogons in Africa talk about that came down. Um, they taught them all this knowledge, right? That uh, they were like, half of their bodies was fish and the upper half was, you know, of a Caucasian person. And they came down and taught them all kinds of stuff, you know. Um, that's what I think of when I think of all these stories here of half fish of people and but anyways and i don't buy the whole part where the guy hung himself i think he was murdered and they recorded the murder as being hung so the king's hands would be clean that's what that sounds like to me clean in the eyes of the public that is Diodorus related that after their marriage, Semiramis and Ninus had a son named Ninias. After King Ninus conquered Asia, including the Bactrians, he was fatally wounded by an arrow and Semiramis disguised herself as her son so the army would follow her instructions, thinking they came from their new ruler. He wrote that her reign lasted for 42 years and that she conquered much of Asia and achieved many feats. She restored ancient Babylon and protected it with a high brick wall that completely surrounded the city. She built several palaces in Persia, including Ekbatana. She not only ruled Asia effectively but also added Libya and Ethiopia to the empire, 
and she then went to war with King Stabrabates, Satyavrata, of India. Having her artisans build an army of false elephants by putting manipulated skins of dark-skinned buffaloes over her camels to deceive the Indians into thinking she had acquired real elephants. This ploy succeeded initially, but then she was wounded in the counterattack and her army mainly annihilated, forcing the surviving remnants to reford the Indus and retreat to the west. 20. Diodorus mistakenly attributed the Behistun inscription to her, now known to have been produced by Darius the Great, 21, 22, 23. The writings of Diodorus about Semiramis is strongly influenced by the writings of Tejas of Nidus. But recent research suggests that his writings about Semiramis do not always follow those by Tejas, 24. Here are other three whose love was evil, and Semiramis, Byblus, and Mira are oppressed with shame for their unlawful and distorted love. Petrarch's Triumphs, Canto 3. Lines 75 to 78 legends describing Semiramis have been recorded by approximately 80 ancient writers including Plutarch, Eusebius, Polyenus, Valerius Maximus, Orosius, and Justinus. 25. She was associated with Ishtar and Astarte since the time before Diodorus. Mm. 13. The association of the fish and dove is found at Herapolis Bambus, Mabog, now Manbij. The great temple that according to one legend, was founded by Semiramis, 26, where her statue was shown with a golden D. Golden dove over her head. Now it makes me wonder if that's really what the dove symbol is that they use for the church. It makes me wonder. Hmm. Like they saw the dove and the crown and a uh, cross. And her being associated with Ishtar. I wonder why Ishtar being the queen of heaven, but she's coming from a fish goddess. Well, if you think about it, the, if the, if the fish things are like the things from the Dogon story, they, they claim they came from the stars and landed in the ocean, right, and came out of the water. That's why I thought that's what the book was talking about in the book of, uh, was it Jashir, when they talked about the, the creatures coming from the, uh, the water there. Hmm. But then they might have been uh, the Fomorians, for all I know. That's interesting. Hmm. Let's see here. The name of Semiramis came to be applied to various monuments in Western Asia and Anatolia. The origins of which ancient writers sometimes asserted had been forgotten or unknown. 14. Various places in Assyria and throughout Mesopotamia as a whole... Media, Persia, the Levant, Anatolia. The Arabian Peninsula and the Caucasus bore the name of Semiramis in slightly changed forms, even some named during the Middle Ages. She is credited with founding the city of Van in Turkey in order to have a summer residence and that city may be found referred to as Shemiramagard, city of Semiramis, 28. too far. Let me do that, okay. Semiramis staring at the corpse of Era the Handsome, 1899, by Varges Serenians Herodotus, an ancient Greek writer, geographer, and historian living from C 484 to 425 BC ascribes to Semiramis the artificial banks that confined the Euphrates, 17. 
and knows her name is borne by a gate of Babylon. 18. Strabo, a Greek geographer, philosopher, an historian who lived in Asia Minor during 64 or 63 BC to 24 AD, credits her with building earthworks and other structures throughout almost the whole continent. 29. Nearly every stupendous work of antiquity by the Euphrates or in Iran seems to have ultimately been ascribed to Semiramis. Even the Behistun inscription of Darius, 15, 16. Hmm. Let's see how far will they let me go. Roman historian Ammianus Marcellinus, born circa 330, died circa 391 to 400, who wrote the penultimate major historical account surviving from antiquity. Credits her as the first person to castrate a male youth into eunuch hood, Semiramis. That ancient queen who was the first person to castrate male youths of tender age, 30. Armenian tradition portrays Semiramis negatively. Possibly because of a victorious military campaign she waged against them. 13. One of the most popular legends in Armenian tradition involves Semiramis and an Armenian king, Era the Handsome. According to that legend, Semiramis had fallen in love with the handsome Armenian king Era and asked him to marry her. When he refused, in her passion she gathered the armies of Assyria and marched against Armenia. During the battle Semiramis was victorious, but Era was slain despite her orders to capture him alive. This legend continues that to avoid continuous warfare with the Armenians, Semiramis, who they alleged was a sorceress, took his body and prayed to deities to raise Era from the dead. When the Armenians advanced to avenge their leader, she disguised one of her lovers as Era and spread the rumor that the deities had brought Era back to life, reportedly. Convincing the Armenians not to continue the war. 31, 28. Man, it sounds like they were spreading rumors. It sounds like she was just a bad person. Like, that, like that's what that sounds like. Lying, deceitful, all these disguises. Sheesh. Man. Castrating little boys. That's what, what, that's sick, man. In one persistent tradition in this vein, the prayers of Semiramis are successful and Era returns to life. 31, 32. During the 19th century, it was reported that a village called Lesk, near Van in Turkey, traditionally held that it was the location of the resurrection of Era. 31. Oh, see, there's another one that resurrected from the dead. That whole Jesus thing, that was the first one. The claims of resurrection, you know. Hold on. Oh, don't let me forget. I, I can't forget. Will Yeshurun, I got something for you, man. Um, uh, <laughs> the Queen of England's coffin, made of UK oak, right? And when, now we know what God that oak is supposed to go to, Allah, right? Allah is supposed to be the God of the oak tree. And then think about this, right? It's laden with, um, was it lead? The, the coffin is supposed to be made of lead on the inside, right? Why, 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 was she a vampire? And you don't want her to climb out of that thing? I'm just saying, like, I mean, she's supposed to be the descendant of Vlad the Impaler, right? She is Semiramis, of whom we read that she succeeded Ninus, and was his spouse. She held the land which now the Sultan rules. Dante's Divine Comedy, Canto V. Lines 60 to 62 Although negative portrayals did exist, generally, Semiramis was viewed positively before the rise of Christianity. 13, 33, during the Middle Ages. She became associated with promiscuity and lustfulness. One story claimed that she had an incestuous relationship with her son, justifying it by passing a law to legitimize parent-child marriages and inventing the chastity belt to deter any romantic rivals before he eventually killed her. 34, 35. 
This was likely popularized in the 5th century by Orosius in his Universal History. Seven Books of History Against the Pagans, which has been described as an anti-pagan polemic. Hmm. Yeah, see, see, she just sounds, she, she just sounds, I, I, it's just disgusting. I, I don't know what I mean. And in the way that this is written, it just seems like they're not even obtaining the idea that this stuff is true. It's just, oh, it was all negative. Uh, how do you know this is all false and negative? 